Hello, my name is Linda Rio. I am the Director of Volunteer Resources at the Humane Society for Greater Nashua. And this is Junior, one of the many pets temporarily living at the shelter. The Humane Society for Greater Nashua is holding its volunteer fair in conjunction with um, an open house at the end of this month, Saturday, April 28th, with the severe weather date of Sunday, April 29th, from noon to 3 on the grounds of the shelter. Seasoned volunteers will also be there to answer any questions that you may have. It takes an average of 90 volunteers on a monthly basis to help the staff care for the animals that are in our care. Some folks have been with us for more than 10 years. That's a pretty good retention record. Volunteers are asked to commit to at least two week time frame for a minimum of a three, week, three month window of time. Minimum age requirements for volunteers in the shelter interacting with the animals is 16 years of age for cats and 18 years of age for dogs. Off-site events do have a much lower age requirement and it's a great time to do things as a family entity uh, and get out there and support your local animal shelter. If you have a passion for animal welfare like we do, we would love to see you at our volunteer fair. We're always looking for new recruits, uh, energized, responsible, mature people to join our, our great pool of resources that we have currently in our volunteer field. It's very simple to apply for a volunteer opportunity. All you need to do is fill out a volunteer application, which you can find on our website, www.hsfn.org. Or you can come into the shelter during our normal hours of operation and pick one up. I personally review them all, and based on your areas of interest and your availability, I will contact you if I find a match in the open, the open schedule of the volunteers and have you come in for a volunteer orientation. Ready to hear more specifics about what the volunteers do at the shelter? It's my pleasure to introduce you to Noelle Schuyler, the moderator for today's discussion. Hi, Noelle. Hi, Linda. Hi, Junior. The first volunteer opportunity we're going to talk about today is our cat and kitten foster care program. I'd like, I'd like to in introduce you to veterinary technician Maria West and some of our current foster kitties. Hi, Maria. Hi. So, tell us a little bit about uh, these kittens. How old are they? Well, these kittens are about five weeks of age right now. Um, they are currently in foster with one of our volunteers that we use. Okay. Um, and they were actually born in her house. Okay, so as far as fosters, what sort of cats need fosters? Is it just kittens or? We do pregnant cats, uh, litters of kittens that have been on their own or orphaned by their mom. Um, maybe we need bottle feeders that don't have a mom when they've come in. So it's really quite a wide variety of different needs for these little guys that definitely come up. So as I understand, we're going into the busy season right now for kittens, is that right? Yes. So what, what needs does the shelter have as far as fosters go? Are you looking for fosters families right now? Yeah, we're definitely looking for more fosters all the time because um, obviously not everyone that we have in our foster program is available at the drop of a dime. So definitely the more people that we have involved in the foster program, the better, so that way it gives more opportunity for us to call more people when the need actually arrives. Because definitely it's throughout the entire week, so seven days a week, yep. we could be calling every single day trying to find someone to take a foster. And so definitely the more people we have, the better. So what are you looking in a foster? What, what kind of qualifications do people need to have in order to, to work? Uh, definitely having a separate and safe place from any of the rest of the animals that you have in your home is definitely beneficial. That will allow the fosters to be safe. Um, we don't know what your animals um, have had in terms of exposure to younger, smaller animals. And even though some of them might be good, it's always safest to keep them 100% separate from your own animals in your home. So would someone start with a litter like this? Would they start with a pregnant mom? How does, how does that work as, you know, if someone's a little nervous about having such little babies in their sure. home? Sure. Well, if these guys were to actually come into the shelter today without a mom, they probably would end up going with a first-time foster. Okay. Um, because they are, their motor skills are good, they're able to eat on their own already, and the real thing that they need right now is 
um, plenty of socialization with people, playtime, and just making sure that they have fresh food and water available to them. So if I want to apply, what do I do? Where do I go? The best thing to do is to come down to the shelter and fill out one of our foster care applications. And then you'll either speak to myself or one of the other technicians that we have available on staff. And if I am looking to foster, but I have a vacation planned or you know maybe just a weekend away, um, or if I'm worried about health concerns with the kittens, um, how does that work? Does the shelter have a support system for foster care families? Yes, absolutely. The shelter has um, the veterinary technicians on staff seven days a week. So we are always available, uh, phone call away. And in terms of vacationing, um, as long as we have enough advance notice, we'll either take the kittens for the weekend for you or even find another foster home to go in momentarily for the weekend or something else like that just to... <laughs> just so that way the foster will still be able to get them back Great. after. Great. So for using these guys for as example, um, how long until they return to the shelter? When do they go up for adoption? Well, these guys just got weighed today, and they're probably about a pound and a half right now. Um, at five weeks, we want them to be eight weeks of age okay. before they actually come back into the shelter. We do spay and neuter all of them, so they need to be able to be neutered. Um, which these guys are three boys, so um, they need to meet that qualification. And with the females, it's probably closer to about 12 weeks before they can get spayed um, because they need to be closer to a three-pound range for our vet. Okay, great. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with more information. Once kittens are old enough to come into the shelter to be spayed or neutered, they join the population of cats there awaiting their new homes. Many of these cats came in as adults and did not go through the foster process. So the cat rooms at the Humane Society are always busy and they can always use volunteer help. Volunteers play a key role in care for the cats. And here to talk about these opportunities is Lisa Henson, one of our pet adoption counselors. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Noel. So talk to us about cats. How many do you typically have? Is there a busy season? We do have a busy season. Um, that usually ranges between April and October. And from that time, we can have anywhere between 100 to 200 cats in that wow. time frame. Um, and our slow season usually is around the winter time. Um, we have probably 50 to 70 cats in the building. So, so there's always a lot of cats there. Yes. <laughs> yes. How do you take care of that many cats? Um, lots of teamwork between the staff and the volunteers is really important. Okay, so if you're, looking for, if you're looking to volunteer with the cats, do you have specific qualities that you're looking for in a volunteer? Yeah, you definitely have to have a passion for animals to be a volunteer. Um, patience is a really important thing. Um, you know, knowing what to do is great. So, say you have 100 cats in the shelter. That's a lot of litter boxes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so people need to be willing to be dirty. Is it really hands-on there? It's really hands-on. You can't be afraid of poop. Okay, so what do the volunteers do on a day-to-day -day basis? What's their actual day like at the shelter? In the morning, it's usually the busiest. Um, we go throughout the rooms, cleaning the rooms. We have some cats that are loose. Um, once we're done with cleaning is fun time. We get to spend time with cats. There's some cats that have been there a little bit longer than others. They need a little bit special attention, and every cat in that building is different. All of them have special needs. And I've heard rumors that some people even get to go in and read to the cats. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> um, sometimes we'll go in and read. We'll actually get to play music for them. We oh, like great. to play the laser light game. So what do you, do you have a laser here? Yep, this is a laser. You can um, buy these at all different places, and they usually like to follow them around and play with them in the room. Oh, great. So is there a volunteer orientation? How does the training work? Usually, um, the volunteer orientation starts with Linda. She goes and shows them around the building. They get an idea of where things are. Um, and then their first day, they usually shadow a staff member. Great, great. So I know um, that we had heard from Linda at the beginning that there was quite a time commitment. If you're not able to commit um, to you know, the three month and certain hours per week, is there something else you can do, other ways you can help, specifically the cats at the shelter? Yes, um, we always need help with donations. Um, we need a lot of things to take care of all these animals. Um, donations are awesome. We love having that. We also have a donation shed that's open 24 hours a day. Great. It's right in front of the building and it's always open. 
And so can you just tell me what these items yeah. are here? Are they things you're looking for? Yeah, these are on our 10 most wanted list. Um, this is kitten canned food. We definitely need this in our busy season when we have all these kittens coming in. Okay. Um, this is adult canned food that we use. Um, this right here that this little kitten is sitting in, that's our um, what we use for litter boxes. This is the perfect size for it. Um, we'll use one about half the size for kittens. Okay. And these you can actually get free at stores. Yeah, it's these just are free. Um, these we we can never have too many of these. So. Great, great. We'll take a quick break and then we will be back with more information about volunteering at the Humane Society for Greater Nashua. Some of our staff members work with both cats and dogs, like Lisa, and Tracy here is one such staff member. So today she's here to talk about working with dogs, and we have Esther and Peter as well. So, hi Tracy. Hi Noelle. So tell us a little bit about what volunteers do in the dog room. Well, the volunteers play a huge role back in the dog room. Um, we always have plenty of dogs that need to be walked, most importantly. Um, and every day we're getting the dogs, you know, fresh food and water, which means we go through a lot of dishes, so we can use their help cleaning those things, um, keeping up with laundry, again, all the bedding we go through, um, and also just working with the dogs to help give them a break from the boredom of a kennel. Um, so again, taking them out for walks, but not just that, you know, doing some basic training with them. We use a lot of fun toys with them, so things like Kongs or puzzle balls where we can put food in them and kind of keep them occupied. Um, so yeah, just giving them some human interaction and attention and exercise as well makes them a little more relaxed when a doctor's come through to look at them. Great. So how often do the dogs need to be walked? I know you mentioned that. Is it a couple times a day? Or? We make sure the dogs get walked at least a few times a day, four to five times a day. Um, but the more they can get out, the better. So again, the volunteers are really helpful in making sure that those dogs are getting as much activity as they can and as much time away from the kennel as possible. We have three acres of land around the property and um, we have nice trails that the dogs can get walked on, fenced in kennels outside that they can play with the dogs in. So great, get plenty of walks. So as far as um, volunteering, when you come in, what type of training do you need? I, I know some people, you know, might not have a dog at home but really want to interact with them. Do you teach yeah. them or? Well, we have volunteers that have dogs at home and some that don't have dogs at home and just want to get their dog fixed here at the shelter. So aside from getting their, you know, normal volunteer orientation, um, getting their, you know, way around the shelter shown to them, we'll also do dog walking training. And um, we use various types of leashes with the dogs. So we'll use, you know, harnesses like Esther has on here for our small dogs. We use just basic leashes for some of the dogs and we also use tools like gentle leaders for dogs that pull a lot um, and we'll certainly as a staff member help you know volunteers get comfortable using those tools and getting the dogs in and out of the kennels so the staff is always around for volunteers if they need help with a dog or have questions and you know the volunteers can walk whichever dogs they're comfortable walking so we have small dogs, big dogs, you know, young puppies that aren't used to leashes mm -hmm. and older dogs that are really great at walking on a leash, so. Great. So what is your dream volunteer like? What qualities would they have? Um, definitely someone that doesn't mind some exercise. Again, they're outside walking with the dogs a lot. So, um, you know, rain, snow, hot weather, we need volunteers. So someone that's not afraid to get outside in any kind of weather and interact with the dogs. Um, and someone that's good at working with people, too. Um, you know, the staff and volunteers work hand in hand to make sure the dogs are getting what they need. So someone that loves dogs and people as well. That's really important. So if someone's working with um, the dogs and they get really attached, yes. they want to help with the adoptions. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's possible? Could they work up to that? Definitely. Um, some volunteers are really passionate about the adoption process, and there's certainly potential for them to, um, you know, train up and become adoption counselors and help those dogs they work with every day find homes as well. So that's certainly an option. Well, speaking of adoption, do you think maybe, I know these guys are both yep. adoptable, do you think you could tell us a little bit about what Esther and Peter are looking Absolutely. for? So Esther over here on her purple bed, um, she's a female eight-year-old Chihuahua mix and she came to us through one of our um, partner shelters um, as well as Peter. Um, Esther is just really looking for a quiet home, um, a very patient owner that can help her get comfortable in a new environment. As you can tell, she's nice and settled, so <laughs> she's just looking for a comfy couch to rest on and would probably be happiest as an only dog so she can really bond to the person that takes her home. 
She's pretty and adorable. She is adorable. <laughs> and uh, Peter is a three-year-old Chihuahua mix as well. He's a little more outgoing than Esther, but, you know, typical of many small dogs still needs a kind of calm home. Um, you know, probably older kids or teenagers and adults would be okay, but, you know, too many people is still a lot of activity for him. So, again, he likes a one lap he can really hang out on and not too much commotion in the house, but he'll make a really great companion for someone looking for a small lap dog. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this, and Absolutely. we will be back to talk to you about volunteer opportunities within our fundraising department. Aside from caring for the pets in their care, shelter staff also spends every day raising money. Here to talk about some of the shelter's fundraising and volunteer opportunities is Lori Dufault, Director of Development. Hi, Lori. Hi, Newell. How you doing? Very well, thank you. So I've heard that you have some pretty amazing events. We do. You know, um, I've got Peter here on my lap, as you've met him already today. And uh, our shelter cares for about 2,500 pets every single year. Wow. And so we are doing fun. We are raising all of our money to care for them, to run the shelter. So we do. We have a couple of very large fundraising events coming up. So what's the first one? The biggest yard sale on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you've been there. <laughs> it is our yard sale fundraiser, and it's going to be held on Saturday, June 23rd, and Sunday, June 24th. And it's a way for other people to be involved who maybe can't commit to being at the shelter, maybe yeah. they have pet allergies, or they just or that they're too young, that their children can't gotcha. be in the shelter volunteering yet. At our yard sale, we have over 100 volunteers at those two days of that event. Wow. And truly, we need volunteers. We're there a week and a half before the event, sorting through donations, accepting donations. Yep. Um, but, you know, it's, it's vital. We need to do this fundraising to be able to uh, feed our pets, have food, have all the, medic all the medicine and vaccines that we need to take care of them. Um, and the yard sale is a great opportunity for families who maybe don't want to commit to something on a regular yeah. basis but could give six hours worth of time. Uh, maybe their child, you know, they can, parents and kids can volunteer together. Uh, we've had groups of Girl Scouts be there before. <laughs> so it's, it's really, it's a fun event. Um, and it is. It's truly the biggest yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Um, Walktoberfest. I've also heard about this one, and I believe it's the signature event of the shelter. Indeed, you're right. Our signature event. That's going to be on Saturday, October 6th okay. at Anheuser-Busch in Merrimack. And we will have, again, over a hundred, just about over 100 volunteers at that. That is a one-day event. Okay. But we have usually about 2,200 people at that event and wow. over 600 dogs. So we have volunteers doing everything from getting out T-shirts for our walkers to... Uh, we have a couple that, <laughs> it runs around every year, they're on trash duty with a little red <laughs> wagon picking it up um, and taking care of it for us. We have, again, parents and kids helping out in the kids zone area. We have parents and kids going out and filling the dog water, ball, water bowls, excuse me, for the dogs all around the day. Um, so again, it's another great opportunity for people who, especially kids, they're so motivated and want to help our pets. And they feel so bad when they realize they can't volunteer in the shelter until they're 16. So it's really a way of them making a difference because the reality is if if we don't have the funds to do what we do, we, we need these events. We need that money to be yep. able to meet our mission every day. Um, another thing about Walktoberfest was just for people who want to come and make a difference but also want to be there and enjoy the fun day with their dog, yep. we um, have walkers that raise pledge money. And, you know, we have one woman who is annually, every year she raises the most. But last year, our third highest fundraiser was, I believe, a three, uh, excuse me, an 11-year-old girl. Wow. And her parents were so proud of her. So, I mean, kids can make such a difference for us at the shelter. And another family opportunity that I know you guys have is tag days, and that's throughout the summer, I believe. Could you tell me Correct. more about that? We usually have eight tag days every year, and okay. we start in April and finish up in October. And, you know, just think back to the days when you were playing rec soccer or rec <laughs> softball. You're standing out in front of the grocery store and collecting donations. But, you know, all, those loose, all that loose change, those dollar yep. bills, they really add up, and they make a difference. And, um, you know, it costs us nearly 3000 excuse me, it costs us $3,000 every day to run our shelter. Wow. So when we have a tag day and can have uh, raise a thousand dollars at a tag day, that's great. it really helps us. And so again, that's a great opportunity. We've got our first tag day coming up and we've got some Cub, Sc Cub Scouts participating mm -hmm. in that one. Another great opportunity for parents and kids to be involved and great. really know that they're making a difference for guys like Peter and all the other great pets that we have at the shelter. 
And where do you find those dates? Are they on the website? We do. We do okay. have all that fundraising information on our website. Great. And usually our premiere, our signature events, yep. that's right at our home page. But okay. otherwise, you can. Uh, there's a tab on our page for upcoming events and tag days. Are there any other ways that kids can get involved with their families or anything? You know, say you have a kid that's really young and wants to have a party is do you ever do anything like that? We do. For the pets? Which, you know we have a lot of kids that do they have birthday parties for pets mm -hmm. and they ask for dog food and cat food and litter mm -hmm. and toys and they're so proud when they bring it in as they should be. These kids are giving us a wonderful gift um, and so we do. We, uh, we offer tours for birthday Great. parties and have the kids come in and we take a picture and we put them up on our website but we also have other kids that organize uh, and Girl Scout troops have done the same thing. They just organize blanket drives and and yeah. product drives for us in their neighborhood. And you know, whenever we get those donations in, it, it enables us to put more money to where it's needed and yep. caring for the shelter, caring for our pets when we don't have to go out and buy things like cat litter or paper towels. Great. So it all really makes a difference to help us. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of different family opportunities. That's Absolutely. really wonderful for Absolutely. everyone who's passionate about <laughs> animals. So we'll take a quick break and then we will be back. Well, that concludes our session on uh, volunteer opportunities at the Humane Society for Greater Nashua. We hope that you found it very informative and that we can see you, expect to see you at our open house. Look for the big tents out in front on the shelter grounds on Saturday, April 28th from noon to 3. In the case of severe weather, we have a rain date of Sunday, April 29th, same time, noon to 3. Some of the highlights during our open house are going to include activities for children, uh, including a scavenger hunt or even for the young at heart. We will ha have face painters and tattoo artists there, temporary tattoos. We will have a photo area for your pets, our family photos, for a, a complimentary donation. We have a bake sale table and hot dogs, turkey dogs, veggie burgers. Uh, your animals, are, your dogs, well-behaved dogs, are welcome to join you on a leash, and we hope to see you there. Come meet the volunteers, and, and I, please tell them that all the animals sent you. Thank you for watching.